Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're happy that you're joining us again this evening. We're glad that there's people like you out there, people who are interested in what's happening on in our cities. If you haven't watched us before, we are on CCX's viewing channels and we cover nine cities and we'll bring people from city councils and mayors to tell you about what activities are taking place in our cities or will be taking place in the future so you can keep up and hopefully get your ideas in on issues that resonate with you. I'm very happy tonight to welcome to our city council portion. Um, we've got Dan Ryan from Brooklyn Center. And you've been on our program several times, right? Yes, Renita. Great to be with you again. Yeah, we're glad to have you. And I asked you ahead of time if you would just kind of briefly introduce yourself out there to our wider audience, because people from Brooklyn Center would probably know about know you, but other people from other cities might not. Well, thank you for that, uh, Juanita. Uh, again, I'm Dan Ryan, council member, city of Brooklyn Center. Uh, the city's been my home uh, for most of my life. Uh, I attended Earl Brown Elementary oh. and Brooklyn Center High School. I earned a bachelor's degree from the University of Minnesota. Uh, my last full-time position, uh -huh. I was procurement and materials manager for a metal finishing uh -huh. operation in Fridley, Minnesota. I retired in 2011. My wife Nora and I will celebrate our 30th wedding anniversary in August. Oh, congratulations in advance. Thank you. And uh, uh, a lot of... Uh, help and uh, support from Nora oh, has made right. uh, my civic involvement uh, that much more productive. Oh, I'm sure. Thank you, Nora. Uh, I was first elected to the City Council in 2006, uh -huh. and I, was, uh, re I won re-election my fourth term last November. Oh. It has been my honor and privilege to serve the city and the citizens of Brooklyn Center uh, the last 12 years in that capacity. Yeah, that, you've seen a lot of changes happen over that yes, time. I have. Of, yeah being as a child and growing into an adult and then establishing yourself in the city you came from, right? Yes. Um, I mean, I'm very excited about what's happening right now in Brooklyn Center, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to share some of that with your audience. Oh, good. Well, now let's move to some redevelopment projects that are underway, because that's pointing you in a certain direction for the future on that one area, but there's a lot of that of redevelopment activity going on. So I thought maybe you could kind of very briefly, because we've got so many of them, mm -hmm. tell us about where the project's located and kind of what type of thing is happening there and when, what's the current status of that project. And I'll just read down the list and let you tell our audience what's happening. Sure. Because there's the Luther Auto has a new Mazda Mitsubishi dealership. Yes, uh, that's under construction. Uh, they should be uh, ready to open ah. this fall or this winter at uh -huh. the latest. Uh, that will be the sixth Luther dealership in wow. the city. It's located uh, just across 68th uh -huh. from the uh, Brooklyn Center Post Office, which most people sure. might not observe from either 69th or from uh, Brooklyn Boulevard, but right. it's in about a block from Brooklyn Boulevard uh -huh. uh, set behind Luther Chev and the Luther oh, okay. Buick GMC right. dealerships. And uh, that uh, will make Luther the largest property taxpayer in the city, surpassing the private ah. group, the Molaski group, that owns the uh, regional FBI headquarters. Now, the former Sears store is in the middle of a one year moratorium, right. so maybe you can speak to that issue. Well, very briefly, the moratorium is simply uh, a legal uh, mechanism that cities have to uh, prevent the use uh, or the sale or the development uh -huh. uh, of a uh, property that is not owned by the city but might be converted to a use that is not in the public interest uh -huh. or may actually even conflict with our uh -huh. comprehensive plan. Right. And that we are limited to have uh, a moratorium one year. Uh, I'm not sure about, I'd have to ask the city attorney if we can simply renew that, but we should be receiving the master plan because the moratorium was passed in lieu of oh, a master sure. plan for the sure. site. And we're trying to negotiate with Sears, but they uh, are probably pretty heavily distracted. Uh, probably. 
Uh, well, let's move on to the other. There's a home furniture and the new Bank of America. People have probably driven by that. Right. That's right. Uh, the home furniture is right yeah. at the corner of 57th Avenue. That we it's 57th on the east side. It's Bass Lake Road on the west right. and Highway 100. Uh, it was. Um, the Kohl's uh, department store. Uh -huh. It's a 75,000 square foot building. We were very pleased that it could be repurposed. Oh, yes. Um, it also was undergoing, they did a beautiful job. It's a uh -huh. beautiful store. You should go and uh, uh, spend Just some money. Just look it there. over for fun. <laughs> <laughs> but the, they're also adding a 24,000 square foot two story addition. Now, the upper part of the addition will be for additional showroom for uh -huh. home. The lower part, we anticipate will be restaurant space. Ah. And then the Bank of America, uh, that's uh, just uh, right across the parking lot mm -hmm. from the home uh, facing on Bass Lake Road. It opened in the fall of 2018 and has a drive through Okay, and then you have a Brooklyn Center Municipal Liquor Store? Yes. Um, the City Council re uh, approved uh, the uh, site plan and uh, designed for a new liquor store to replace uh, Municipal Liquor Store 1 that's located at 5625 mm -hmm. Xerxes just across uh, the drive from the Cub Food Store. Uh, the advantage will be that uh, the uh, new liquor store will be owned by the city, will build equity ah. in the property, and will build an additional annex about 9,700 square feet. The new store will be Excuse me, the new store will be 9,700 square ah. feet, and the uh, addition will be uh, about an additional uh, 4,000 square feet. Sure. But the other advantage is that the city was anticipating that our lease would, being up this year, uh -huh. would probably go up, and the principal and interest payment on a, the 15 year note to build a liquor store is almost exactly the, the the cost of the current lease. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so it, I think it made great financial oh, sense. Yeah. And uh, the city has municipal liquor for two reasons. First is liquor control. So right. we don't have eight, 10 small uh -huh. liquor stores across the city. The second reason, of course, is to for re revenue, it is an enterprise fund. Oh, yes. And we use the money, the profits from the liquor store to maintain and improve our parks. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be sure Good that we, exchange. Yeah, we wanted to be sure that we could uh, see an, a revenue improvement there. And what's happening at Jerry's Foods? Well, Jerry's Foods has been a, a kind of a sore point with a lot of uh, long-term city residents because uh, the the store, Jerry's Foods, a big supermarket, it closed in 1991, uh -huh. and the old store was demolished in 2003. Since then, the the store. Long stretch. <laughs> yes, is the property has been vacant. It's right. been a vacant lot right. right in the middle of, uh, uh, right on a major commercial street on, on Bass Lake Road at Xerxes. Right. But this is an example where the city doesn't own a property, there's not a lot we can do. Right. When the property owner uh, pays yeah. like 60 plus thousand dollars a year in property taxes. Right by according to the Hennepin County website. But a group called Real Estate Equities is in the process of negotiating the sale of the property and their concept was brought to the city council for a two, for two multi-family buildings. Uh -huh. uh, one is a senior workforce housing uh, project uh, and the other is, it, excuse me, one side is a senior, uh, a senior apartment. The other side is what we call workforce housing. Uh -huh. And uh, the uh, five-story, 143-unit uh, workforce is on the, the housing is on the, the south, uh -huh. s facing directly onto Bass Lake Road. On the north side, uh, paralleling that, is uh, the uh, senior, independent senior living. That was the, the term oh, I, was, right. I was searching for. And that will be uh, the uh, 127 units. So a combination of uh, those will be... Uh, Adding a lot of units. Okay, yeah. And uh, the, the properties will be really very uh, 
very qual high quality uh, finishes. The, there are washers and dryers in, in each unit, uh, stainless steel appliances, solid uh, surface counters, and high quality cabinets. Uh, real estate equities, their mission is to provide multifamily residential developments that will be a community asset. Uh -huh. And their business model is that they'll operate these for uh -huh. uh, 20 years. Uh, so they'll ha have a lot invested in keeping the properties right. up and, uh, and managing them well. Uh, and the design and the objectives fits well with our 2040 comp plan for uh, what we call transit-oriented development. Right. And then you have added a Fairfield Inn and Suites? Yes, Fairfield Inn will be uh, constructed. It'll be 82-room hotel. It's right across from the existing Embassy Suites. Uh-huh and just to the west of the Earl Brown Heritage Center. Nice synergy there. Right. And I'm moving swiftly through some of these so we can get to some sure. other topics. Sure. Oh, and then Central Homes, Eastbrook Estates. Yes, Eastbrook Estates is the last significant uh, uh, R1 or single family uh, zoned property remaining in the city. Uh, it will be subdivided into 30 lots uh -huh. and Centra is the contractor uh, on the Eastbrook Estates property. Uh, the city will uh, be negotiating a sale of the land to Centra and uh, the project will also involve uh, public improvements to extend the street 68th Avenue ah. from Aldrich East uh -huh. to North 5th Street. And there'll be, of course, be some uh, sewer and uh, below street oh, utilities right, that have right. to be installed. But uh, this will be a great addition because, uh, as we talked about, our mid century homes, those are almost all in the range of 1,100 to 1,200 square right. feet. These homes will be 1830 to uh, 2,450 sure, square a, a feet. Sure, a different category for people. And two story homes. Right. Yeah, more contemporary. In the uh, 30, uh, 330,000 to uh, 360,000 mm -hmm. price range. And then one of the things that the city council needs to work on or think about is you have to think about what's the future of Brooklyn Center going to be. Exactly. You have to work at the day to day and keep all that going. But you have to spend some time looking on what the future is happening. Right. And maybe you can talk a little bit why it's important to have public assistance, acceptance, and support from the kinds of projects that would be transformative for your city? That's a very good question. You know, one of the concerns I have is that not too many years in the past, uh, the city had some bad experiences with multifamily housing. Oh, yes. Right. So uh, I'm pleased that you asked me about the um, project at Jerry's uh -huh. Foods because that uh, got some unfavorable public uh -huh. comment. and. It isn't that we don't listen to people in an example like that, but the council has to uh, use its best judgment based upon the recommendations oh, of our, our staff and recommendations of um, other experts on what the market demand is. Ah, right, right. But to get to the point about citizen engagement and uh, making people feel that we may not change our our policy we may not cha change our our action on a particular project uh -huh. but they can have confidence that we we listen to them that that by doing things similar to what we've done with uh, LISC and the opportunity site right. that people feel that they have a voice that they're involved in the process right. while we it's a representative model of government uh, ultimately the council it, sets the policies, makes the decisions, decides to go forward or oh, right. on a project or not. But there has to be participation. And really, it just highlights the need for um, good, good, solid citizen participation. And so that folks feel like we're doing things with them, right. uh, to them. And so you, you have to reflect back what, that you have heard them and then how it fits into the overall planning for the future. Exactly. And I can give you one small example. Oh, that's what I was just going to ask you for an example. Okay. Um, way back in, I believe this was in 94 and uh -huh. 95, 
prior to the park and ride at 65th and Brooklyn Boulevard, okay. there were public, uh, in, they, they did, I don't know if they used the term then, public engagement, but there okay. were public meetings right. regarding uh, the building of the park and ride, and there was some resistance to that in the neighborhood. We uh -huh. went to those meetings. But I was very impressed by the fact that when Nora and I, my wife, right. went to the meetings and we observed something that we thought was not the best uh, visual layout uh -huh. for uh, the, the park and ride, and specifically what it was, there had been plans to put boulevard trees on the, on the uh, median in the middle of the, of the road as 65th comes west from the boulevard uh -huh. and makes uh, like a hook. A okay. turn. And we brought up the idea that, well, as those trees grow and mature, we don't want them to die, <laughs> that right. they'll get larger and that they'll, they will obstruct the line of sight. Ah. And right there at Marlin Drive is right. a crosswalk. Within a couple of days, we observed surveyors out checking that ah. street. Uh -huh. And lo and behold, the boulevard trees were never installed on the median. So, uh, so the city does right, listen to people right. if you bring them something. And we like to hear that because more eyes on anything oh, definitely. means... definitely. Things that you, somebody that didn't get thought of in the beginning of the process can get added later on, right? Indeed. Now, another area, switch gears, to um, the different road projects that are underway in our plan for Brooklyn Center. Now, there was a lot of work done on Brooklyn Boulevard from 49th to Highway 100. Maybe you can tell us what's happened and where it's at. Oh, yeah, that's uh, really a very um, good question. A lot of activity, a very complex project. I think a very uh, important one. Uh, first, I'll just uh, mention uh, what are the basic uh, activities that are going on, people probably have observed that uh, they're repaving. Because, right. Uh, the city anticipated quite a few years back that the county would need to uh, repave or possibly even rebuild the roadway right. and, and do some other improvements. The city of Brooklyn Center recognized that as an opportunity to make great, a greater or broader spectrum of improvements. Uh -huh. And uh, the object was to uh, identify uh, what really needed to be done. We did that through the Brooklyn Boulevard Corridor Study conducted in 2013. And uh, it identified inefficient traffic operations, unsafe conditions, uh -huh. inadequate bus stops, inadequate sidewalks and pedestrian crossings, lack of bike trails, and poor access to adjacent neighborhoods. Now, some of those conditions apply more uh, north of uh, Pass Lake Road. On one part of it, yeah. Yeah, to 694. The project, of course, that's underway right now is last year and this year is the stretch from uh, Bass Lake Road south to 49th. Mm -hmm. And that, that involves uh, opening up uh, Lilac Drive to uh, the boulevard uh -huh. with a new signalized intersection. Uh, there will be a 10-foot trail on the west side of the boulevard, a new 6-foot wide sidewalk on the east ah. side of the boulevard, new bus stops, and that's for the C line. Uh -huh. And the, the electronic kios kiosks and improved bus shelters right. were installed by MTC. And um, I'm trying to think what else. Oh, very important as well. We're reducing the four-lane road to three. Uh -huh. That will be two, uh, a, north, a single northbound and a single southbound lane with a central turn lane. Uh -huh. And Ramsey County is doing that with uh, Larpenter Avenue between Roseville and uh, St. Paul. Uh -huh. uh, that shared uh, county road. And they're doing it because it, data uh, by traffic engineers shows fewer crashes, that, it, that it's safer. The trade-off is you may have a little more congestion at peak right. hours, but you don't kill as many pedestrians <laughs> crossing the street. That's important. <laughs> yeah, and that's really our job is to ensure the safety of the public. Right. And then 252, what's planned for that road? Very elaborate, 
very involved uh, planning process. I've been involved in going to what we call the, the uh, Trunk Highway 252 PAC, uh -huh. which has involved uh, members uh, of the City Council from Brooklyn Park, uh, myself and Mayor Elliott, uh, re recently elected, but he's been on a couple of those meetings. Of course, the County Commissioner, Mike Opat, sure. met representatives from MnDOT, and uh, a representative from the Federal Highway Administration because we applied for highway grants. Right. But what really got this, this it all started was back in uh, fall of 2015, the city engaged a consultant uh -huh. and we, the city of Brooklyn Center, conducted our own study and came up with a recommendation. Of course, we don't draw the plans, that's right. MnDOT's job. Uh, but we came up with a concept design after extensive initial uh -huh. study and we determined that uh, 252 uh, for many years back it should have been a freeway but it, it uh, remains right. what we call an expressway in other yeah. words uh, a high-speed roadway with signalized intersections which are very dangerous there have been a lot of crashes oh, yeah. because we have too many cars uh, backing up in the turn lanes and at peak hours some of those cars are actually out in the the travel yeah. the through lanes which is very unsafe and we've had accidents and actually 66th Avenue uh, is rated as the second worst intersection oh. in the metro for crashes it's always been in the top five as the most right. dangerous one of the most dangerous uh, intersections statewide and so we we determined that uh, on the basis of recommendations that uh, 66 should be converted to a freeway interchange uh -huh. 70th which is only a right in right out will will be closed but will have a uh, pedestrian walk uh, pedestrian bridge over 252 oh, that'd be much and safer, yeah. we're still in the process of refining the actual uh, design for 73rd Avenue because we share that with Brooklyn Park. Oh, sure. We have the south half, they have the right. north half, that's our, our, our joint boundary. And that's why I referred to the uh, PAC meetings because that and other issues that Brooklyn Park right. is dealing with, uh, they're in the process of the public initial public approvals right. for their plan. So, uh, uh, Healthy safety change is happening in both areas, right? Yes, absolutely essential. And even though it's a, a state highway, if the city of Brooklyn Center hadn't taken the initiative in 2015-16, right, uh, we wouldn't be where we are today. And because of the major uh, uh, projects that's going on with 35W at 494, uh, MnDOT doesn't want us to undertake construction until right. 2023 because oh, but it's underway but it's getting underway yes we'll have we'll have the we're completing the environmental uh, review and uh, we've had we'll have another round of public engagement where uh, designers will bring out something very close to uh -huh. the final designs so people should keep tuned in for that yes we've I count We've had at least eight meetings on ah. 252 in Brooklyn Center alone, uh -huh. but there will be more. Indeed. And I, I thought we'll switch but now to talking a little bit about your amphitheater, because it did get completed. Now, that was a project we probably talked about the last time I had you. Uh, yes, we did. But maybe you can uh, tell people where it's located and give us a little idea of the process of getting it completed, and then what kind of activities you're seeing there. Oh, sure. Well, the amphitheater, uh, one of the great things that the city has done is we've had some outstanding task forces. Uh -huh. um, just very quickly mentioning the uh, our, our housing commission distributing the uh, Welcome to Brooklyn Center bags oh. we talked about. Oh, you know, right, with, right. With all the information, yeah. city information, and now we have a new policy where they can they can also include coupons, uh, discounts uh, ah. for goods and services at uh, uh, local uh, Brooklyn Center businesses. Oh, sure. Now, the uh, task force that was set up for the city's 2011 centennial celebration. Right. That uh, uh, germinated seed, uh, what can we do that is those 
great uh, volunteers in Brooklyn Center who wanted to do something that would leave a permanent mark, right. uh, a, a, a monument, if you will, to sure. uh, the the first uh, settlers, the, our veterans, uh, long-term members of the of the city. Something that would would be there for generations. Yeah. And they came up with the idea of a permanent amphitheater. And so uh, there was a, a very serious uh, fundraising drive, obviously, because uh -huh. the thought was to uh, raise money privately to construct it. Uh, when we looked at the cost, we realized that that wasn't feasible. Uh -huh. So uh, those of us in the city council were scratching our heads, trying to figure out how we could get sufficient money to put up something that would probably cost two hundred and forty, two hundred fifty thousand oh, yeah. dollars. Yeah. Uh, there was a very, very successful private uh, fundraising efforts, but it, really it was Luther Group. Uh -huh. Luther Auto Dealers that uh, came up came forward with a very major oh, uh, contribution in excess of hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and that really put us over the top. But the city still ended up paying for uh, just about half of the uh, of the right. structure. But I think it was really a worthy investment, and uh, we use it for uh, for uh, movies in the uh -huh. park in the summer. Uh, obviously. Uh, uh, a band uh, or musical performances. Uh, it's uh, the focus of the uh, National Night Out oh, right. uh, kickoff party. And, right. uh, it will be this August 5th. And uh, you can rent it for uh, for your own events oh, as well. Sure. And so uh, it's a great asset and uh, people have really come to appreciate it and enjoy it. Now it's located around, not too far from your city hall, right? Right, it's just down the parking lot from yeah. our city hall and it faces out onto uh, Centennial yeah. Park. People used to know it as Central Park. It, mm -hmm. it is our Central Park. The other uh, great feature is that uh, for folks who have lived in the city, like I have uh -huh. for many years, uh, you can purchase a, a commemorative uh, brick oh yeah right. and uh, you know co to commemorate a loved one who's right. passed right and uh, my father was a World War II veteran and my uh -huh. mother uh, had bricks there right so it's something that can go on into the future from individual people right right no that that's uh, a lot of cities have been adding them because there's a lot of interest in that in the, in our some in our spring winter spring, summer, fall weather here in Minnesota. People like to go out and see music, see movies. Winters are long. Right, right. So you got to enjoy the, the activity for summer when it's here. Absolutely, we do. Well, I want to thank you so much. We've gone over a lot of information, but you can see that Brooklyn Center is really is involved in a lot of things working towards your future, right? but also meeting your current needs. So we're glad to have you with us, and, and we're glad you joined us, and we'll hope you'll come back. Bye. Yeah.